Hi, this is Brent Willett. In a previous Zaxworks Pro Animator tutorial, I went over the basics of setting up 3D text. In this tutorial, I'm going to show importing an Illustrator file. So we're going to start with Illustrator. Here's a logo for Wild Style Media given to me by Mil Galarte. He uh, owns the company Wild Style Media down in Florida. He also has a podcast called All Things Post. If you want to check that out, I would highly recommend it. But this logo represents how oftentimes a logo might be given to you all in one layer with all the different uh, elements in one layer. So we're going to show how we can import that and be able to animate all the different pieces. One thing that's very important is uh, making sure that the Illustrator file is saved correctly. So I just want to make sure we go to File, Save As, and then save it as an Illustrator file. And I'll save over the same one, so Replace. And we want to choose... Uh, supposedly any of these Illustrator formats will work, but sometimes, for whatever reason, uh, there's a conflict and they might not work. Uh, I personally always choose CS2. That has always worked for me. Zaxworks might recommend using Illustrator 8, but I'm going to use CS2 just because I have always had no problem with that. And one thing that's also very important is make sure this Use Compression is not checked. If it is checked, Pro Animator will not recognize the path, so you have to make sure that use compression is not checked. So then uh, we can save that and then go into uh, Pro Animator. Now here we can import our Illustrator file with this little button right here, and then we'll navigate to where it is, and it was this one. And here's some options we have when we bring in our uh, Pro Animator file. The version that I have right now with the single layer. I'm going to leave it, everything checked as is. It'll bring in the Illustrator colors, and this Dismantle Incoming Groups will make each one of those sublayers in Illustrator come in as a different object. So we'll simply import. And here we have a track. It automatically made an object track with all of these different pieces of the logo. One disadvantage here is that we cannot see by the label what they are, but we can always go in and, and relabel these just by double clicking and that's an E. So You can see it brought it in and it's already extruded and it ha already has a bevel on it. It looks a little bit funny because coming in from a 2D program like Illustrator, it doesn't know where to put things in, in 3D space, so to speak. We can find our objects, like here's the, the black circle that's the background. If I go over to this object controls panel, I can twirl down this info and I can slide this back in Z space. And there, that reveals all our other objects. So that's almost all we really have to do. Maybe I'll bring the depth down on that because we don't need that piece to be super thick. And maybe I want to select this white circle, half circle, and this red half circle. And maybe we'll make them a little bit thicker. And you can go go through each piece and just adjust it as necessary. And there, that looks pretty good. There's a 3D logo. We can put our view to the front. And maybe zoom that in. And we're going to say this is going to be our landing position. And I'll double click down here to make a new a new pose. We'll say we have this animating in in two seconds and this is our landing pose. And we're going to change this pose. And with our first pose highlighted, we can uh, make some adjustments. Now I'm going to click on this XYZ so I get our position controls. I'm going to bring it, zoom it in towards the camera. And there's just a very simple zoom in, but we can do some more with this. I am going to go to two different views at once. If I click on this where it says one view here and click on two horizontal, I'll get two different views. So this allows me to have a user camera and I can see now my main camera in relation to where my logo is. So this will al allow me to kind of see what I'm doing with this logo when it's outside of my camera range. So on this pose, I'm going to just rotate it a little bit on the, the X. And now I'm going to do something in this transition this is one of the neatest features in Pro Animator and in any program is the cascade function. So all of these these objects that are in here, I can cascade, which means that they'll they'll all kind of move at a different time. Now that I've adjusted that, we can see that all these pieces now will kind of follow each other. If I want to uh, to play this, I can can kind of see what's happening, and I can actually adjust this. 
a lower cascade number means that they'll all move in quicker succession in relation to each other or a higher cascade number all the way up to 100 means it will move the next piece won't start moving until the last piece is settled in this case we kinda want more of a subtle movement and we can change the order um, we can do birth order is what its default is and that is the order going from top to bottom over here in this list or we can do reverse birth which makes it do that which isn't real good because when we get this black disk here in, in front of us I'm actually gonna go find where this black disk is or black background here and uh, drag this down to the bottom and here we have the the logo elements animating in and then the the text of the logo coming in after that so that already just by itself is a, a reasonably interesting animation and it's very simple with two poses and a little bit done on the uh, transition here I'm going to change the ease here make that 70 which is going to make each of the pieces kind of slow to a stop just makes it a little bit more of a subtle movement now let's say that we wanted to have some of the objects come from different places like for instance maybe we want this black background to come from further back in the background and everything else comes from the camera we can very easily put it on its own track to be able to make that kind of animation so this is this is the the background I'm just gonna grab it and drag it out of here and it'll automatically make a new track now I can animate this separately from everything else so this is the landing pose I'm gonna leave that the way it is I'm gonna double click it up here to get a new pose for just that piece or anything that's in that track put it back here to this the same time and I'm going to push it back in Z space and I'll make the scale smaller so it comes out of nothing and now we'll have that coming in back there while everything else is coming in in the front maybe I want to have it flip so here's another little animation thing that you can do kind of an automatic animation this path actions I'm going to set this up to do a pitch X and for 360 degrees so it's going to rotate one full revolution as it comes forward so that's a little more interesting and I can also have it fade on if I click on this eyeball here and change this from visible to fade on and this shows uh, the percentage of time during the length of this transition that it will fade on right now it'll fade on over the whole course of this transition although I can change this if I want it to fade up to full opacity over half of the transition I can change that there so now it'll all come in and kind of end at the same time I can change the easy ease on this maybe I want this to come on a little faster so maybe this the background comes on in one second and the rest of the pieces come in after it this way all the circle part of the logo comes in and the, the rest of the text will animate in after the rest of it now I'm going to go over lighting so I want just a simple uh, lighting setup and we have a whole bunch of lighting rigs available to us here if I click on this tab up, up here there's a bunch of just pretty standard lighting rigs or there's some of fancier lighting rigs that are already built and animated and ready to go but I'm going to start with this default lighting I'll double click on that and it will add, add a light track that put it at the top of my list here and it has three lights and I'm going to turn on this first light and go back to my object controls and this is where I can uh, have it cast shadows So I'm going to click cast shadows I'm going to goose up the rays so it's a higher quality when I'm in ray tracer mode and I'm also going to go to my lighting globals down here which is some uh, different things that you can do with lighting including image based lighting or your ambient light but it also has the ambient occlusion and I'm going to turn that on and what ambient occlusion does is it creates darkness where images meet now I actually might not see that very much in this let me uh, here let me go to a user camera let's uh, select all of these let's put a different edge profile on these uh, down here let's go to inset face and do outline box maybe that's a little thick so we'll bring this bevel scale down and go to our material swatches and just put in a white material here so this if we go back to our main camera this will help 
make our text pop out a little bit more but uh, I can also use this to demonstrate uh, the ambient occlusion. If I click this render test button it will render the frame and show the full detail of what we have going on. So I'll click that it does its little render and now we can see there's some shadows being cast from the letters and we can see this dark edge in here where those pieces are meeting that's what the ambient occlusion does without the ambient occlusion we still get the shadows but we lost that that darkness that that gave it a little bit more definition so a lot of times ambient occlusion is really nice nice way to m just give things some more depth or make maybe make something pop off from the material that it's already on and i mentioned that the uh the logo came in with the illustrator colors and I can double click on this material here and it automatically puts it into the material editor and now let's say I want to add reflectivity so I'll go down here click on this and it'll allow me to navigate to where I might have a reflective image it added the image down here but it does nothing showing up until I bring the map reflectivity up and you can see that it already changed the the highlights here and now that I've assigned that to this one I can actually highlight this and copy it command C and I can select my red double click on that to put it into the editor and go back down to my reflectivity if I click on the plus I'll add it down here and highlight that and do command V and it'll paste it in so then I just have to I don't have to navigate it to it every time I could just goose up my my reflectivity settings and we'll highlight the black do the same thing and bring up the map reflectivity. So now as this comes in we're going to have a little bit of shine to it. On this black material we can turn up the ray trace reflectivity. So as, w as this black background comes in we'll see it reflect these other elements. So just some simple quick things that we can do to, to very easily make it look a little bit more polished. And we can render this out as is with an alpha channel. Let's say you need to bring this into your editing project maybe you already have a background uh, in whatever editing program you're using or maybe you want to just put it over video or whatever you can animate this out with an alpha channel or if you want to you can import a background right in here and to do that click on this BG button and it'll pop up a window where you can navigate to where you might have a background I'm gonna go to where we were before and pick this rampant background um, I use a uh, rampant products a lot they're great for editors for enhancing uh, video edits but they're also fantastic for graphic designers one of the products that they have just happens to be a bunch of these psych backgrounds these are just still elements but they're really really handy so I'm gonna use uh, use this from rampant design open that up and there I have a background let's uh, add one more element go back over here to my object list go down to the bottom and click off so none of the tracks are highlighted and I can add a primitive of a ground and there's a ground plane now right now it's kind of in the middle of everything so I'm gonna click on it and go to my XYZ and just move the Y down until it gets to the bottom a little bit underneath my my text now we can see this shadow here this is just a an OpenGL shadow preview right now I am working in if I go to this output I'm working with the ray tracer renderer so that's when I was doing the render test and you were able to see the reflections. That was the ray tracer renderer at work. Um, there are two renderers. There's the OpenGL and the ray tracer. OpenGL is a very fast renderer, uh, but you don't get all the bells and whistles that you do with the ray tracer. I personally like to use the ray tracer. If I go back to my object list and my floor here is my ground plane is highlighted, I'm going to go to my material editor and make a new material and select shadow catcher and just drag that on top of here now when I click render test that plane disappears except it catch still catches the shadow so you can see the shadow over our rampant background here and it gives it kind of a nice 3d space and this shadow might be a little dark so I can go up to my light that has the shadow go back to object controls and bring the shadow darkness down I can even make this softer and right now it's at the top of the slider but I can highlight this and type in let's say 30 and now let's do a render test there and now we have a finished graphic I can render this out 
Now to render this out, I go to Output, and I could click Render Movie. And you get a couple options. You can title it whatever you need to. I'm going to make a quick time movie and then click Save. Now it gives you a couple more options. Do we want to do it with in lossless format? And it explains what they are here. If you have an alpha channel, you have to do it in lossless format, and it'll it'll render it as a uh, QuickTime animation codec. Or you can render it at H.264, so we'll just do that. But we don't want to watch this whole thing, so we'll just stop that. Now, real quick, I want to show you a slightly different way of organizing your Illustrator to imp import it coming in with layers. And we'll go back into Illustrator, and this is the file where I had all the pieces under one layer. Now I'm going to show the same file with everything broken up into separate layers. There's a couple benefits to this. One of them is maybe we want wild style to come in as one piece and we want media to come in as one piece. If we organize them into layers, they're, they're all still separate here in Illustrator. But if we organize them into layers, this will import into ProAnimator as, as one object, which depending on your logo, that can be a huge help. So we'll go back into ProAnimator here, import our Illustrator file, uh, navigate to where it is. Now here, I'm going to click this Open by Layers. This will uh, allow it to open it as those layers. You can I can uncheck this Dismantle Incoming Groups too just to make sure that it doesn't bring in all those individual things. I'm still going to leave Illustrator colors checked, and then I'll import. Now we see we have a lot fewer layers. It came in looking the same way, but we have a lot fewer layers, and they're actually labeled what they were in uh, Illustrator, which is very handy. We can still drag these around like the uh, the black background layer. We can still drag this into its own track to be able to animate that separately. And we can do all the things exactly the same way that we did before. But now, like the, uh, the word while style is not the individual letters, it's just one object. So I can't, in this case, I can't have them animate in separately because it's one piece. But uh, like I said, in some cases, this is preferable. It just depends on your logo and how you want to animate it. So I hope that gives you a pretty good overview of the things that you can do with ProAnimator. So I would encourage you to certainly play around with the program and, and just have fun. Thanks for watching.